Hey everyone, so let's talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets. Jarmo Kekalainen relieved of his duties as general manager. So, I mean, Jackets fans, I got the I got the rep here. I got the logo. Let's talk about it. Blue Jackets fans, how are we feeling? Because there's a lot of things here. There's a lot of different levels. I think one being, obviously, Kekalainen's done here. John Davidson will step in here in a big role. Uh, people are already pointing towards Jeff Gorton in Montreal, but again, just... Is Jeff Molson from the Habs going to let Jeff Gorton go? With I feel like he's calling the shots behind Kent Hughes in a lot of ways. Uh, then there's just a lot of different conversations. And I'll scroll up here with Aaron Portsline, who says, Columbus will have no problem attracting candidates to replace Kekalainen. Three reasons. Ownership that stays out of the way, but would sell its soul to win. One of the best prospect young talent pools in the NHL. Incredible city, fan support despite on ice struggles. So there's like different sides. People are like, okay, who wants to be GM to a struggling mm -hmm. team? But as Aaron points out, and as I would point out, there's a lot of bright perspectives towards the Blue Jackets. I think there's just getting around the rough edges and getting around some of the mistakes that have been made. Uh, whether that's kick a line or not, I mean, I think that's up for debate. But uh, just to go to the release itself, um, there's just a lot of conversation about Davidson and how he was close to kick a line in. It was a tough situation for him as a friend. And just being... A committed guy for the organization for 10 plus years so i mean that's crazy right i mean i, I kind of forgot that kekalina was named gm back in 2013 now we're 2024 so that's wild um also the, the line a news so that's kind of the different parts of the video here kekalina what's going to happen what are the moves that are going to follow after kekalina is done with the organization he's the one that acquired patrick line he's the one that put a lot of faith in patrick line he's the one that signed patrick line uh, to stay with columbus past that contract that he got brought on with uh and now patty line is if you guys didn't know he is out uh with the player assistance program with the nhl so he's stepping away from hockey he's had a lot of injury issues stuff like that and then a podcast that talks about the blue jackets um also said some pretty disturbing stuff around line a one specific guy um you guys can go watch the video i'm not going to display it on this video but uh, Patrick Line actually addressed it on Twitter. So he actually responded to it a couple times and then someone found the clip and then Patrick Line said, this is just not okay. So you guys can go watch it yourself. You see the at and you see the origin on Twitter. So go check it out. Um, just in terms of education, I, I honestly couldn't believe what was said was said. And then Boone Jenner conversation. Is Boone Jenner going to be traded uh, this was the clip going around that he actually, after the Ridley Gregg situation, he actually went after Ridley Gregg open ice. And there's a lot of conversations around the Leafs looking at Boone Jenner, the Edmonton Oilers looking at Boone Jenner, a lot of different teams. And Boone Jenner's played a huge role. I mean, he played like 26 minutes. He's He was an all-star, repping the all-star jersey right now. And Aaron Portsline, again, local reporter to the Blue Jackets, says... And he works for the Athletic. Boone Jenner is a wanted man as the March 8th NHL trade line nears. But the Columbus, Jack, Columbus Blue Jackets captain, now in his 11th season, is right where he wants to be. Um, to sum up the article and just sum up the kind of message that's being sent around. And this has kind of been the message going for a few years now. Is that teams have wanted Boone Jenner badly. Like teams want these type of players. That's why I've, I've said it Boone Jenner. I've said it Scott Lawton. These kind of guys are not easy to come by. The second to third line guys. That's why the Lightning valued Yanni Gord as much as they did. And why Seattle values Yanni Gord. These type of guys that can move up and down the lineup. But like play that second, third line style of with some grit, with some bite, and a lot of leadership. And Boone Jenner being the captain of the Jackets, he fits that. But at the same time, the Leafs are no... I mean, they're familiar with trading for a captain of the club as Blue Jackets. Rewind Nick Foligno. That one didn't work out. But... Two positives on top of the mess of Nick Foligno is Boone Jenner is younger, obviously, and two, he's under term. So he actually has a contract to play out here versus Nick Foligno at the time was a rental. So there's different ways to look at this, but I think if you can go after Boone Jenner, you've got to. And I think, I mean, who's got to do it? I think Columbus is looking at Edmonton, looking at Toronto. Probably those teams are those calling. I'm sure there's other teams. I mean, Colorado would love a Boone Jenner. So that's another team out there, I would say. Um, but is Columbus going to do it? And does Boone Jenner want that to happen? So there's a lot of trade, mock trades out there. Edmonton, Boone Jenner, like a first. Warren Fogel going the other way, like a young player. I could see something like that. Um, honestly, 
I could see the Oilers doing at least one of these scenarios, getting either Tanev, Tarasenko, or Boone Jenner. I've heard a lot of smoke around Tarasenko in terms of Edmonton. And considering Calgary's already traded with Vancouver, maybe they're not scared to trade with Edmonton. The only thing I'd say to bounce off of this is I don't think they would retain for Edmonton. So I think Tanev, sure. CC would go the other way, and I could see the draft compensation being a swap like this. So CC a second and a prospect like this, maybe a fourth the other way, and then Tanev with no retention. I could see something like that. Then going through here, the line A conversation. This is just one example, but I could see it being a blockbuster like this, like Joshua Waugh, uh, first round pick, and a roster player. Josh Anderson going back to Columbus, I don't know if that's realistic, but that would be the structure of a line A trade. I could see line A just going for a change of scenery to a rebuilding team, like a Montreal, like an Anaheim. Go down the list. I think line A, he needs to be reminded he can be a star again. And I, I just don't think he got that consistency with Columbus. So maybe it's a team like Anaheim, more low key with a growing core, or maybe it's a team like Montreal and he can play right away with Caulfield and Suzuki. Those would be my two favorites for uh, line A, Montreal and Anaheim. Um, Montreal could be a candidate there. And then that would reignite the line A versus Matthew, Matthews conversation for sure. Going back to the Leafs perspective, I mean, this is a lot to give up. Talking about Nimala, Voigt, and a first round pick for Boone Jenner. There's some retention there, but that's a lot to give up. But I honestly think that's what's going to take to get Boone Jenner out of Columbus. It works salary cap wise for Toronto, especially if camp's going the other way. I could see that package being intrigued to Columbus. Again, does Jenner want to go? That's the conversation. But again, Tanev, maybe not retention, but we'll see. Could the Leafs send a contract back the other way? I think since the Leafs don't have a second round pick, I could see like a third and fourth and like Timmins going for Tanev. Something like that could be a possibility. And then again, could the Leafs go for more of a secondary tier defenseman like an Andrew Peak or a Boquist? Maybe just send Camp to Columbus. I could see a scenario like that in a smaller sense. And then just to wrap it up, could the Leafs go for a defenseman and forward from Columbus? I think the Leafs are having conversations here with probably a few teams. Calgary being one of them, Columbus being one of them, Philly being one of them. And I think they're looking for potentially a defenseman forward combo. That's what David Pagnota reported on. That's what a few reporters uh, talked about is that Toronto's looking for a defense and forward combo. Maybe it's Columbus. I I think that would be hard to come by though. Getting like a Proveroff and a Jenner, but a Jenner and maybe like an Andrew Peak as like a sixth defenseman. Maybe, but again, I think that's where it's like then you're going for another upgrade. Maybe Lil like maybe Andrew Peak's on like the third pair with like Brody, for example, or the second pair, and then you get another defenseman like a Tanf for the top pair with Riley, and then Lilligren's part of that deal. I'm not saying I love that, but. I could see Columbus being the team that you go for a forward defense combo as much as I could see Calgary and, and Philly. So give me your thoughts, guys. This was the ultimate news that Kekalainen was relieved of his duties, but I wanted to talk about what could follow, which I think the line A conversation, if it's not going to happen now because he's going through player assistance, you got to respect the guy's process. So maybe it's an offseason trade, but Boone Jenner is the really interesting one. Could they trade one of their defensemen? I think they could trade a couple defensemen. And then past that, maybe they trade a guy like Roslevic or one of their other forwards. But um, yeah, there's a lot of conversations around that. And I do want to say a lot of respect to Johnny Goudreau and the guys that are supporting Line A in ways like this. Um, it's great to see, obviously, as always, hockey come together in ways um, to support teammates and support uh, the community. So give me your thoughts, guys. Subscribe, like, comment, notification bell, all that good stuff. And uh, ultimate news is Kekalainen gets relieved of his duties as GM. Longtime GM, 11 years with Columbus. That's... Not small at all. So Columbus trying to go in a new direction, trying to have more playoff success because they've really only seen the second round and they're trying to move with this new younger core led by Fantilli, led by Juracek. I mean, the, we know the Juracek frustrations. People are talking about maybe Columbus trades Juracek. I don't know if I'm sold on that. Maybe with the new GM and new system, new direction, Juracek uh, could find a path to Columbus again because maybe they move out guys like Proveroff, Pete, go down the list. So I uh, just wanted to mention that, but they've got to really start valuing their younger core and give their younger guys an opportunity. So we'll talk soon on the next video. Comment some video suggestions and your thoughts on the video itself. Talk soon. Peace.